Earlier this month in one of our live streams, actually it was two live streams, we did a really exciting $50 eBay challenge where we took an absolutely terrible pair of $50 Allen Edmonds we bought on eBay, we stripped them, and we did a complete a re-dye and patina job and polished them up, and here they are. This is the before and this is the after. Just with a little bit of leather dye and some Saphir shoe polish. Look at what we were able to transform this shoe into. So in today's video, we're kind of compiling all that footage together, we're condensing it, so you can see exactly how it was we transformed these pairs of shoes. I'm Kirby Allison, and I love helping the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes. Join me as we explore the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition. This is the first time I've tried this live. Now, of course, you all know that we have a mail-in patina program. You know, this uh, is basically what you could send shoes in to be done by Caleb, uh, but it's also something you do yourself if you feel adventurous, uh, and that is dyeing your shoes. So this is a pair of Allen Edmonds that we bought uh, on eBay, 30 bucks, terrible condition, uh, ugly color, and what I did is I stripped it using an acetone, and now we're gonna try to play around with dyeing it. So I figured for this video, why not try something a little bit more adventurous? So we are going to start off with kind of an olive base, right? Uh, and then we are going to then put a dye over that using a brown, and I've just got the standard kind of tincture Frances leather dye that we're gonna use for the brown. And then after that, uh, we're going to spray on some acetone and see if we can get a little bit of a marbling effect. So uh, I don't recommend doing this, on, uh, at least for the first time, on important shoes. Buy something on eBay and practice with them. Uh, but all these leather dyes are really that if you're looking to change the color of your shoes, uh, you would only want to use an alcohol-based leather dye uh, because anything else is really going to wash off uh, and uh, not, um, you know, not really be permanent. So famous last words, you know, I've got my rubber gloves on, but... Um, you know, being a little bit uh, cautious in terms of using leather dye because, you know, polishing in a suit and tie is one thing, but dyeing shoes in a suit and tie is really taking it to the next level of, um, of being a little adventurous. So we'll see. Uh, should I wear a bib? Uh, I don't know. Do we have an apron? Maybe we grab an apron just, just in case. We're going to see if uh, Caleb can go grab one of those. Uh, we do have aprons, and actually we need to have some aprons made with our new Canon logo on it uh, to sell uh, on the, uh, the website because I think that that would really look good. Yeah, dyeing shoes in a Charvet shirt is um, borderline, um, borderline stupid. Um, so we didn't prep with the Reno mat. Uh, really an acetone or, um, you know, there is um, a leather stripper that we sell, the Decapant. So, you know, you'd want to do that beforehand and give the shoes a little bit of time to dry. The other thing that's important to note is you really want to be using an open grain, you know, like a full grain open pore leather. Uh, anything that is, um, you know, a corrected grain, you're going to have a little bit more of a difficult time polishing. Okay, so this is a base layer. This is just a kind of a green olive, yeah. right? Did you mix this yourself? So this is something Caleb mixed up. You know, he's got it in one of these little glass jars. So I'm going to apply this using uh, the cotton tip um, that comes in the bottle. The reason is, is the base layer, I'm really not too concerned about applying that uh, with any kind of finesse. We just need to coat that shoe um, completely. And one of the other things that you'll see about alcohol-based leather dyes uh, is, you know, it's not like a, um, you know, it's not like a paint or a polish that kind of builds transparency. Whatever the color is, is the color. You apply that and you apply over it, it's really not going to create a much of a darkening effect, right? So you don't have to worry too much about that. The way you create that dimensionality isn't with additional layers as much as it is uh, darkening the tint of the actual leather dye that you're using. Okay, so I'm just applying this on, and again, you know, you don't have to worry too much about it going on too thick because, again, once it's absorbed into the leather, uh, the color is the color. Uh, you can see this is pretty badly cracked, so we're going to kind of put this on, and you can see it's alcohol based. You actually see it evaporating. I'll probably pull out a, um, one of these paint brushes to really get in kind of next to the welt because you really you can't get into that area just with this cotton uh, dauber. But what's nice about the cotton swab uh, is that you know, it applies this uh, pretty generously. So it's easy to kind of do a, a big, thick coat. Um, you know, right here, again, you know, we're building up that uh, kind of base layer, and then we're going to continue to build on top of that. Uh, here we're doing an olive green just because we thought we would be fun 
we're doing this live. We're only going to do it on one shoe. Maybe we dyed the other shoe a different color sometime else. So really kind of working this in. Well, these are sacrificial shoes, so they'll never see the light of day um, outside of this channel. Yeah, you know, dyeing is something that, you know, is for the enthusiast, I suppose. It's not for the faint of heart. I mean, you know, you can dye a pair of shoes black pretty easily or dark brown. I mean, what's nice about the Saphir uh, Tincture Frances is that it does come in kind of standard colors, right? So you can get a dark brown, a medium brown, black. Uh, but then they also sell it in kind of the primary base colors uh, so that uh, you can, uh, you know, do your own kind of patina, your own, mix your own colors up. Um, so applying this here, you can see it really kind of soak into that leather and I'm just making sure that we get full saturation. The lighter the shoe, the easier it is to do the patina because, um, you know, you can't, you can't really lighten the shoe. So once a shoe is a dark color like black, you could never patina. So I'm going to take the paintbrush and I'm going to use this to just kind of get in <clears throat> right here at the base of that welt, right? Um, yeah, so Max is saying that uh, he tried this on an older pair of shoes. I mean, again, if you're just going for a solid color uh, and you're not really uh, trying to get any type of patina or anything, it's really actually easy to use, right? I mean, if you have a pair of like faded shoes, you know, that you want to take black uh, or, I don't know, something's happened uh, and you want to treat a dark brown pair of shoes or take a medium brown pair of shoes to dark brown, uh, it's really quite easy. Uh, it gets more difficult whenever you're applying multiple layers to do a patina uh, where you have a, you know, fading and kind of transition of colors. The other thing that you have to know about patina is that it's going to look terrible until you polish the shoes, right? So you really can't fully judge uh, the results of the patina uh, before you put any polish on. So here, you know, you're going to look at this and you're going to say, ah, oh, this looks really flat. And it does look flat because, again, you've got to understand that we've completely stripped this leather. There's no wax on it. Uh, and it's certainly a great uh, example of just how important uh, waxes are to the actual finish of a pair of shoes. You could have a beautifully dyed pair of shoes, but if they're not well polished, uh, they're always going to seem a little bit flat. All right, so let's see. I don't want to get any of this dye anywhere, so you want to hold that. Yeah, so let's just put that there. We're going to close the cap. I'm being careful. Uh, yeah, I mean, a good pair of suede shoes is, I, I have to say, under, um, I think, underappreciated. I mean, suede is amazing, especially for the summer. It's easy to clean. I mean, we have an entire section on suede cleaning on the website. Uh, okay, so this is the dark brown uh, leather dye. Sorry, this is regular brown. Uh, okay, what would you buy first between your burgundy London dot tie and your navy one? Whew. Uh, considering you can't see them in person before buying. Well, they're both perfect ties, and it'd be hard to go wrong with. So if both is not an option, I don't know, what would you go first? I mean, I would probably go, it depends what you're wearing. If you're wearing a lot of navy, um, I might go with the burgundy, because burgundy really pops nicely. Uh, you really couldn't go wrong. I mean, my question is, is, you know, do you prefer the more subdued kind of uh, subtlety of a navy and white dot? Or do you want something that's going to pop a little bit more and kind of make a statement, which would be the burgundy? Um, but I wear both those ties and absolutely love them. So uh, it really, you, I mean, I say this just really quite literally. That's why those are part of our permanent collection. So now I'm going to kind of dab this because we want to create a little bit of texture. Uh, and this is where a nice, high-quality brush comes in handy. Uh, these are actually artist brushes. It's because it's got a real high-quality bristle that uh, is flexible and isn't going to break. Anyway, so here we are. We've got that. We're going to let this dry and then we'll polish it, right? So uh, we've got a few polishes. We've got the Napa. So first, we want to rehydrate this leather, okay? We just kind of, you know, beat it up. I mean, we stripped it with the acetone. So we're going to want to feed it with the Napa Leather Balm. And this is really a great conditioner. It's a great alternative to the Renovateur. What's nice about the Napa Leather Balm is you don't have to worry about it darkening uh, the leather because, again, it doesn't use any animal uh, oils or fats in it uh, to nourish the leather. This is just a whey protein. It's the most gentle and the most neutral of all of the conditioners. I mean, if you're ever worried about changing the texture of something, uh, the Napa Leather Balm is really exceptional. So we're going to use this uh, to really 
uh, leather bomb, not leather bomb, but we did bomb the leather using the, um, the acetone. I mean, that's like a nuclear bomb to the leather. Uh, but we're going to hydrate it using the Napa leather bomb. And then what we're going to do is polish it with two different cream polishes. We're going to use, this is the uh, new Parisian Brown, the 910. This is our newest pigment. It's on the website today. It's live. So if you want to buy Saphir's newest brown, and we're the first ones in the United States to really have that. It's available in the drop down all the way at the bottom, 910 Parisian Brown. Look at that. You know, be the first. And then we're going to use a little bit of green. The more you allow the shoe to dry, the better. Um, you know, and under ideal circumstances, we would finish this tomorrow. And we'll know pretty quickly whether or not this is going to take any of, of this polish at all. Now, the only thing that you really have to worry about in the, uh, in the leather being wet is it just didn't take the polish, right? So you're not going to ruin it by putting polish on a wet shoe, uh, but it's just not going to do anything. So we're going to find out pretty quickly. So first, and you know what would have been fun is to actually see if we could fix that. The, we should do this afterwards to see about sanding this area with the cracks uh, on the other one, I think. Does the other one have cracks, too? Not as bad. Yep, cracks on this one, too. So this is what happens whenever you don't polish your leather. You end up with beautiful cracking like that. And unfortunately, once that happens, there's not much you can do. Uh, now, we actually had a customer that brought in a pair of what uh, were they, Edward Greens, uh, that I think were his first pair of Edward Greens. I mean, literally beat these shoes into the ground. I mean, cracking all across the vamp. And he said, you know what, these shoes are special to me. You know, I've had them for 12 years. They were my first nice pair of Edward Greens. And so I, you know, this was giving these to Caleb. And he said, you know, I'd like you to just go ahead and do the best you can, polish these things. And I think that there's a certain kind of thriftiness to saying, you know what, they're cracked. You know, they've got a little bit of wear on them, uh, but I'm not going to throw them away because they're special to me. Uh, I like that. I can identify with that. So I think that's nice. Okay, so we're conditioning the leather. And again, uh, this is just a great example where sometimes you just need time. I don't think we're going to take this all the way to finish today. We'll probably pick up this shoe tomorrow. I think it's too wet to really, I don't think, I don't think, I think it's too wet to really do a shine on it. I have to say I'm really encouraged by the progress that these are coming. Now, you'll remember, this is what we started out with, okay? This was a pair of uh, Allen Edmonds that we bought on eBay for $30, right? Terrible condition, cracked, you know, kind of on the side. We stripped them using an acetone, right, to completely pull off the finish. Uh, and then we dyed them with an olive green and a dark brown uh, leather dye from Saphir, right? Now, you'll remember yesterday, the shoe was quite flat. Uh, we used a little bit of the Napa Leather Balm uh, to really condition and rehydrate that leather. Uh, and what you see right here is the shoe with a little bit of Napa Leather Balm and then having been buffed. So these have been buffed once, uh, and this is uh, why it's got a little bit of a shine to it. And I have to say, I mean, other than the fact that these shoes are generally in bad condition, like the you know, hard countering's trash and it's a little broken here on the toe cap, but I have to say that uh, for $30 and a little bit of... Um, a little bit of uh, you know elbow grease. Uh, the shoes are really looking uh, quite well. So you know we could call this you know kind of the Parisian brown, which is our newest shoe polish, and we have the Parisian brown. That's what we're going to use on it. So we're going to set this aside. So this is our reference shoe to kind of show you how much progress that we've made. Uh, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to polish these babies. Now I've got two different polishes that we're going to use. One is the green, which I think this will be a first for me. I've never actually polished with the green polish. So this is a first. Uh, and then we're going to use some of the Parisian brown also. So the way that we're going to do this is I'm going to start with the green because really what I want to do is build up that foundation here on the toe, across the strap, uh, the monk strap, uh, and then again on the back of the heel. Uh, to do that, I'm going to use one of our Kirby Alice and Wellington chamois. Um, and um, yes, so what I like about this is it's a little bit of a plusher chamois. It helps you grab more polish. Uh, and otherwise, I would use our high shine chamois. And I'm just going to kind of dab this on. Um, and then we're going to begin kind of working it into the leather. Now, since this is green, I just am going to use this in the areas of the shoe that I really want to bring out that color. And one of the things I've always said is that with polish, you're really tinting more than anything else. Applying this into the, the monk strap, let's see. 
Uh, navy dress shoes. Uh, I think navy is appropriate at night. Uh, but whenever I say navy, I mean, it's got to be a dark, dark, dark midnight navy. Uh, I'm not a fan of blue shoes. I mean, if they look blue, if in sunlight you look at those and someone says, wow, those are blue shoes, uh, I'd say that those aren't for me. Uh, but I think that um, a really dark navy can be quite elegant uh, at night. Uh, and, you know, that's accessible or that's uh, appropriate. So let's see. Uh, I just received my order of uh, Wellington chamois and high shine chamois. Can you wash them? Absolutely, yes. Uh, I recommend washing them by hand in warm water with light detergent. The reason by hand is because really, you know, you don't want your wife uh, to accuse you of having ruined uh, the washing machine and you wouldn't want any of those residues um, to really be in there. Not that it would probably be a problem, but just to be on the safe side. I'm just blending it a little bit. <clears throat> so let's see, what do I think of spectator shoes? Uh, do you own one and how do you shine them? So I don't own any spectator shoes. Um, yeah, they're very difficult to shine, uh, almost impossible just because of the white. You've got to be quite careful with that to make sure that you don't have any bleeding. Um, so where can you get a jacket like the one that I'm wearing? You know, you'd probably have to have something like this made. Uh, and even then, you'd probably need to spend some time with whoever you're having make them to, to go through the books and find a, a fabric. Cleverly, you know, will I uh, buy any shoes from Cleverly again? It's been a while. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, ooh, boy. You know, I've got a lot of Cleverly's already. And so I think at this point, uh, there's a lot of good makers. And so I think at this point, we're kind of transitioning uh, probably to diversify my range of shoes. I think, um, you know, I'll always have a soft place in my heart for Cleverly uh, because I do enjoy the shoes that they have made for me. Uh, but as it stands right now, I don't really have any plans to have Cleverly make anything. Have I tried Nicaraguan cigars? Um, yes. You know, a lot of the Davidoff stuff, uh, <clears throat> they've got some uh, Nicaraguan tobacco in addition to Dominican. Uh, I think Padron, where does Padron come from? I mean, so, you know, Nat Sherman, I mean, if you're smoking really any of the American cigars, uh, you're going to pick up some Nicaraguan tobacco in there. All right, so now we're moving on to the Parisian brown, which, um, you know, is a little bit darker than the tobacco brown. Uh, it has a little bit of burgundy in it almost. That's a really kind of beautiful color. So I'm going to put this on the shoe, work it in. No Tom Ford shoes. You know, I'd love to have a pair of John Lobs, uh, but they haven't offered to make me a pair uh, for free yet, and I'm not in the market for $8,000 shoes uh, at the moment. I think my wife would divorce me even if the business paid for those. She'd kill me. Um, I would love to have a pair of lobs, and one day uh, I will have a pair made. I think it's a little bit of a rite of passage, especially for me since I'm so into shoes. I mean, I really want to have a black cap to Oxford from John Lobb. I mean, that's what I'd have them make. Uh, and one day I'll add a pair of lobs to my wardrobe, and when I do that, uh, it'll be probably in celebration of some big milestone. I don't know what that milestone is yet. Maybe, you know, the children graduating from college. Uh, but in celebration of something significant, uh, we'll do it. Maybe a million subscribers, you know. If we get a million subscribers on the channel, I'll go have a pair of John Lobs made. Uh, and we'll all celebrate that together. So the cream polish is, has dried. You really want to allow this a little bit of time to dry. Thank you. Sandpaper. Um, And again, just one buff with the, I mean, this is one application of the uh, Medal Dior cream polish, and it really looks quite exceptional. I mean, look at that. Um, so it really speaks to the quality. Hilditch and Key would be interesting. Look at that. I mean, this is coming quite nicely. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, you'll remember yesterday, whenever we were looking at these shoes after we applied that finish, just how flat they looked and how dull they were. Uh, and again, I just kind of mentioned to everyone that that's how a pair of shoes looks like after it's been dyed and before it's been polished. Whenever you uh, strip a shoe, you're pulling all those waxes off and it's always going to look flat. So, I mean, look at this. I mean, it looks exceptional. Okay, so I've got some sandpaper. Since we're here, we've got time. This is, uh, what grit is this? 400 grit sandpaper. Uh, and so, if you uh, ever see that your edges and heels are really rough, 
right? That inevitably happens. And one of the easiest ways to re refinish those is uh, actually just by sanding them a little bit. Now, what you'll do is you'll take off the color. So after you sand them, you've got to completely refinish them. Oops, be careful. Um, you've got to completely refinish them with uh, leather dye and waxes. So just working here on the toe. The toes are always the first to get dinged up. I mean, this has a huge gouge in the toe. I mean, whoever owned these shoes before did not take care of them. Unfortunately, you see that with a lot of Allen Edmonds, which is one of the reasons you can get such uh, inexpensive Allen Edmonds on eBay, is because for the most part, it's a relatively unsophisticated consumer for Allen Edmonds. I mean, you really, I'd say the average Allen Edmonds consumer is not much of an enthusiast, so they're not taking care of their shoes at all. And so you can find shoes on eBay that look terrible, that really just need to be polished. Um, Alan Edmund Grayson Loafer. Which one is that? I don't know. Uh, we'll have to look that up. Smithton Smooth Belt with Croc Alligator Shoes. Yeah, you could get away with it. You know. I mean, <laughs> I think you've got to be careful about going uh, too far out of your way to match your belt to the shoes. I mean, you know, it's like a matching tie and pocket square. You know, if you look like you've tried too hard, you look like you've tried too hard. Uh, that's really kind of not the point. So one of the things I'm trying to do is keep this edge square, and I'm using my thumb to really guide and control the sandpaper. <laughs> and then I'm just going to bevel it a little bit on the bottom. <laughs> you really could go at this forever. <laughs> okay, so I've got the leather dye here. So this is alcohol-based leather dye. I'm going to apply this on the uh, edge, right? So this is the edge. You could call it a welt, but it's not. Um, the welt's there. We're picking that up. Now this we're doing to uh, really kind of saturate the finish, but we're not going to be done just with applying the leather dye. It's not sufficient. You've got to add more pigment. And how we're going to do that is with the cream uh, and a wax polish. Do we have a dark brown mirror gloss? Yeah. Grab that for me. And do we have a dark brown cream polish? Should have it over here. So my uh, journey, if you will, with edge dressings um, has, I've come a long way, I suppose. Uh, and um, I used to use some of the renovating repair cream, which is something that Saphir Avell was recommending for edge dressing. It's really rubbish. Uh, the problem is, is because it's basically like uh, oil paint and you lose that natural uh, texture uh, of uh, the leather whenever you use it because you're just painting it on the surface. It's like oil paint. Um, so I've fallen out of favor with that. I don't like it. The other problem with that is any type of solvent, like a polish that you put on top of it, would pull it off. So if you tried to polish on top of it with like a cream or a wax polish, you'd totally pull it off. So that's bad. Now we've got a Feeblings product that's really easy to apply, that's effective, uh, but their brown is not dark enough for me. Their black works fine, uh, and it's basically very similar to uh, this uh, leather dye, except that it has some waxes in it, so it's going to give a little bit more body to the finish. But I think that the best kind of thing you can use is if you sand it, you need to dye it first, but otherwise, just a little bit of dark brown cream polish. Uh, and dark brown or black um, mirror gloss is really the best thing that you can use. So next what I'm doing is I'm applying some of the, um, the cream polish. I'm just doing it with my finger. I find it's easier to control. I like to do this before I finish poling, polishing the shoes because if I get some cream polish on the upper, at this point, it doesn't matter. Uh, but if you're done, right, or at the end, then uh, you can really kind of disrupt or ruin the beautiful polish you worked so hard on the shoe. I probably should let this dry a little bit more, so maybe we apply this and then we start working on the uppers a little bit. Yeah, thank you. The shoes are looking pretty good. I have to agree with everyone. I mean, I have to say, I mean, this is, you know, whenever we said experimentation, I really wasn't joking. Um, we were kind of doing this. Now, if anyone doesn't want to do this themselves, we have a, a patina service that Caleb manages along with um, our shoe shines. So I'm applying this quite generously because, again, I want those waxes. Now, this edge was in bad condition. Let's see. I'm not going to apply any more cream polish to the actual upper. Instead, I'm going to start with some wax. 
So let's have some fun there. So right now I'm applying a little bit of the just the wax polish. This is a first application really so I'm going to buff it off using the horsehair brush and then after this what we'll do is we'll transition to actually using the high shine chamois to buff it to a higher shine. Uh, but this is just again I'm applying waxes to the entire shoe. This is what's going to help protect the leather. It's going to give it a nice elevated shine. Um, yeah, Casey, I love it. Anyone using a plastic shoehorn should feel great shame and go order a real shoehorn immediately. I totally agree. Uh, we've got some great shoehorns on the website. Uh, those ones with the wooden handles, we've got more of those on order. We have those made uh, by the same gentleman that makes uh, our tie racks here in Dallas. And we've got a bunch of those on order. Uh, that is, of course, the most unique shoehorn we have. It's a 42-inch monster uh, with a um, horn tip. And uh, those were hiding out in the warehouse, uh, not on the website. And so we had to re-add that because, again, you know, stuff gets lost. Um, and it's just a pain. All right, so next I'm adding some of the mirror gloss. This is a dark brown mirror gloss. I'm ad adding it to this edge. And here... Uh, again, sometimes your mirror gloss cracks, right? I, I don't know if you can see this. It's cracked a little bit. It's totally normal because it's such a dry polish. And really what I do is I just take my chamois and just kind of push it back down. Um, all right, so look at this. This is one coat of wax polish, and these babies are really starting to shine up. I mean, look at this, okay? So look at these two. I'm not even done yet, right? This is how we started, and this is where we are now, okay? Now tell me, for 30 bucks this is in a pretty nice pair of shoes. I mean, that's what we paid for these things on eBay, $30. Now people will say, ah, oh, but you had to spend all this money on the shoe polish, right? But yeah, I mean, you'd use the shoe polish anyway, and the shoe polish you can continue to use, right? So yes, I mean, you have to invest in good quality polish in order to do something like this. But look, this is what we began, and this is where we are now. Now, this is, you know, probably not worth more than a $100 pair of shoes because, um, you know, it's not super well countered, but again, if you're on a budget, I mean, you can't deny uh, that this is pretty nice stuff. So let's see, is this the pig bristle? That's horse. Uh, can someone grab me a pig bristle brush real quick? I'm going to buff the edge. Now, why pig bristle? You could do it with the horse hair. You could do it with the chamois, but the pig bristle with its stiffer, uh, the stiffer bristle, because there's not a hair, is going to do a better job kind of shining that up. And you can see, look at how well that's finished right now. I don't know if we can get a close-up can be. But, I mean, if you look at that, I mean, it's really well finished. And, um, you know, let's see. So, one, the leather dye is very important to kind of saturating that. Uh, and then the, um, the cream polish is going to add more pigment. It's not as transparent as uh, the, the leather dye. And then, finally, the uh, dark brown mirror gloss. And this is, a, this is an example where I'd say, you know, you can substitute the uh, neutral mirror gloss for a pigmented mirror gloss because it didn't have that much pigment in it, in it to be totally honest. Uh, but that said, um, whenever it comes to the edges and heels, I really would go for a pigmented mirror gloss because you need the pigment. Look at this. This is really coming together. I could use some more mirror gloss here on the edge, and I'm just feeling this edge, and it feels a little damp to the touch. So I might allow this to dry overnight because we just applied that leather dye. And just like with the leather itself, you really want the leather to be dry because it's not going to take the polish and really shine. So we're going to put this green up. I don't know when I'll use this again. Uh, you know, we've got a wardrobe tour, but I don't think we have any comprehensive video of, like, my suits. Um, this is the Pat Deluxe, which I'm going to keep because I think that those work really well in tandem. Here is the lid. I'm going to clear some of this stuff off. Um, that's probably what I would recommend. So here we are. We're starting with the mirror gloss. And uh, I'm going to focus on the toe cap since we've got limited time. Otherwise, you know, you'd probably want to add some of this to the back also. Why not just a little bit? I'm going to add it just kind of right here. So I always start with a thick layer of the mirror gloss because really what you want to do is fill in those pores uh, you can apply this with your fingers. I'm not a big fan of applying it with my fingers, but you can certainly do that. Lysol and sunlight, there you go. I mean, it's not something I would do regularly, let's just say that. Sunlight kills everything. You could freeze them if you needed to. I mean, if they were really that bad, uh, you could freeze them. 
So we're going to start buffing that mirror gloss to a shine. I'm starting off with a light touch. Again, a little bit of Pat Deluxe, just a tiny a bit, a little bit of water, just a tap, you know, just enough to kind of melt or glissage uh, that mirror gloss a little bit. And then as you begin to build the shine, I like to increase slowly the amount of pressure that I'm using to slowly kind of buff that to a higher shine. I was oversaturating your sh uh, shoe caps when going for that mirror shine, Casey. Uh, what were you uh, oversaturating them uh, with? Less is more, especially with the water. A little bit of water, not much. So you can see there's a little bit of a shine here. It just needs to be evened out, and that really just comes through the buffing process. Now, I don't have any trench coats, but I do have a beautiful top coat that Him or Johnny made for me that is exceptional. Uh, bring in. So we're experimenting with a new high shine chamois. You want to bring that to me, and I'll play around with it? Yeah. Um, everyone has a different approach. Preston actually said that <coughs> with our high shine chamois, he finally learned how to use it, which I tried to get him to elaborate on that, and he's gotten some of his best shines using it. Um, but the type of chamois you use really makes all the difference in the world. I mean, this is where kind of really pressing it in makes a big difference. I'm just seeing right here on the toe cap in the middle, there's a little bit of a dent in the hard countering. And so it looks like that didn't really take much polish. Oh, you travel to Mexico City for work. That shanky does matter. That sure does. This is a little on the small side. Now, this is a, a sample of some fabric that we got that I'm going to play around with. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's good. So this is basically a really high quality cotton jersey that we're uh, evaluating as, as basically a second high shine chamois option. Uh, it's a little bit softer. We're going to have it cut differently to allow it to be wrapped around the fingers and tied, uh, which uh, is certainly a technique. And it's a high quality shirting, so it's not going to lint. It has nice stretch to it. You can see this really working. So, I mean, this, I have to say, every single time I do this, and I've been doing this a long time, I'm always still very impressed and very happy with even the results I get. I mean, uh, and I know that I can produce really good results. I mean, I've been doing this long enough that I know I can do good work, but still, I'm always, the satisfaction of a job well done and a good shine, still to this day, I continue to enjoy, and it continues to surprise me just how good it is. I mean, look at this. I didn't really spend much time on this. This is 10 minutes, not even 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, right? 15 minutes. I've been talking. But look at that shine. I mean, holy smokes, guys. I mean, that is, like, good. Look at this. I mean, guys, what do you think? I mean, this was, this was the shoe that we started out with, and look where it is now with a little bit of dye. Now, I like to use the Pat Deluxe with the mirror gloss. I find that they work really well together. Some people like to apply it by hand. I think that if you are applying it by hand, by bare hand, uh, you can uh, probably work the polish into the leather a little bit more effectively. Um, because really what you want to do is you want to push, you want to stuff those pores with the waxes so that uh, you, you basically uh, fill those uh, pores. That's what allows you to get this smooth finish so that it refracts light. Uh, these are the shoes that we worked on today. This is what we began with and this is what we ended with. Just some great proof of how far a little bit of polish can go in totally revitalizing a pair of shoes. And I have to say, uh, re-dyeing it, this is something that really anyone could have done themselves. Uh, it really wasn't that hard. And with the right product, of course, and products that we sell here at Kirby Allison. Uh, thanks for visiting. Uh, please do take a moment to check out KirbyAllison.com, uh, where we've got the largest selection of luxury shoe care, luxury garment care, and other luxury clothing accessories available in the world. Uh, I'm Kirby Allison, and I love to help the well-dressed acquire and care for their wardrobes while exploring the world of quality, craftsmanship, and tradition.